hello and welcome. This is a very special edition of my Let's Play series. I'm going to be playing the demo for The Ocean at Night. The Ocean at Night is a demo submission to Yaoi Jam 2020. A, a game development challenge that runs for two months. Um, and this is a game that I have worked on. Um, my friends and I have made this game together. I've been learning programming for the past two months. And I'm very excited for us to finally have it released. To tell you a little bit about our game. This is an all ages BL visual novel. You will play as Kova, a long struggling overworker who desperately wishes to forget his past. Consumed by work, he doesn't have the time to think, to dream, until Nero crashes into his life. The young Nero is everything he's not and he finds himself being drawn in deeper and deeper into his life. Will you reach an end where they can both be happy? To that I will say, you better, because they both deserve to be so happy, and I love them both very much. <laughs> the demo is about 13,000 words, uh, four backgrounds, three CGs. There will be voice acting, but later, um, One of the cool things that um, has been put into this game, n not by me, but we've had three programmers on this, working together, two of us have been learning, um, is a, a camera and phone system. You can take selfies of the character, of the main character, and you can change backgrounds on the phone, and the phone system is really cool and I love it a lot. So. Let's get started. Imagine a world filled with adventure, teeming at the edges and begging to be explored. A realm filled with courageous heroes, mythical beasts, and races of every kind. A world of fantasy, of magic and sword fights, of elves and vampires. A life where anything could happen, if you wished it. Hundreds of years ago, perhaps that's how the world truly was, but it had all faded away to become a distant memory. Adventure had given way to necessity. Fantasy had given way to contemporary. Those that had once called this world home hunted down to nothing, their remnants highly contested over in the black market. But these days, no one gave any mind to the thoughts of the distant past. Some would rather not recall beyond the events of a few days prior. And then there were others who trapped themselves in their daily routines wishing for the past to stay buried. A gentle breeze passed through the dark streets as I stepped out onto the pavement with a sigh, rubbing at the spot near my temples where I could already feel the headache gonk coming on. And the music down a little bit. The music that we found is beautiful as well. Of course, it was already night. Even though I was supposed to finish at 4.30, more unpaid overtime. Maybe... Maybe it'll make me stand out enough to my boss and I'll finally land myself a promotion. Then I'll leave in the early afternoon go back to my top floor luxury apartment and have my butler make me my meal. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone stays late. If you don't, they'll suddenly find a reason for your position to become redundant. 
and they'll replace you the next day. With a sigh, just like my previous, I walked down the uneven path on my way back to my luxury apartment. And by luxury apartment, I mean the three rooms that cost me nearly the entire of my paycheck every weekend, every week. Sure, it doesn't look too shabby, but it's not exactly a place to call my own. Nothing ever changes, does it? I've walked this way so many years already, and I'll be stuck on the same path for the rest of my life. My eyes drifted down to the waterway that connected my office through the town, all the way down to the ocean. It was half dried up and still. If anything, I'd say the water would only come up to my knees. As a child, it looked so deep. Nothing changes except for my perception of the world, and never in a good way. My eyes gently closed as I walked the familiar way home, my mind already on autopilot. Just a moment to rest. If I could just quit and find another job, but that's impossible. This town is tiny. Even if I could manage to find an open position, any gossip my workmates spread would fill the town immediately. No one would hire me. And then I'd be thrown out into the street, not able to pay my rent or... Or feed my wonderful General Fluffikins! <laughs> oh, I named the cat and I still find it funny! <laughs> I'd rather starve than see her go hungry. When I die, you're allowed to eat my body. Anything for you. <laughs> Maybe I'm going a little crazy. I blinked my eyes open, watching the trees swayed in the breeze and the leaves that floated down into the dark, murky water. When I'm old and grey, will I still be here, walking through the night, just for every day to be a repeat of the last? I suppose it's better this way. When I'm like this, there's no time to think. I don't want to think. If working until I'm exhausted is the way to achieve that, then so be it. That, that is not healthy. <laughs> What's that? It sounds like it's coming from the water. Would someone really be swimming at, a t at this time of night? Wait, you're definitely not allowed to swim in there. It's so late and pitch black. Did someone fall in? Maybe a drunk? Peering through the darkness, I squinted at the water, trying to get an idea of just what was going on. The splashing continued, becoming more and more frenzied. Am I seeing things? I swear something looks like it's glowing down there. In that moment, I locked eyes with someone. Someone with half their body sticking out of the water, trying desperately to... To what? They wildly thrashed around, trying to escape from what could only be the grate. Hey, you! Help me! M me? Can you see anyone else around? Of course I mean you! His voice stayed low, barely above a whisper, but I could already hear below his sarcasm a deep, troubling tone begging for help. I'm gonna help him. There's no choice, is there? He might be stuck, and my conscience won't let me sleep tonight if I, don't, if I just leave him. This is just my luck, though. The last thing I need right now is to deal with probably is to deal with a probably drunk man stuck in the grate. With yet another sigh, I stepped over the barrier and, removing my shoes, stepped into the water. What are you doing in here? You know swimming isn't allowed. I wouldn't be swimming here if I had a choice. Quickly, less talking and more pulling. How 
exactly did you get stuck in the grate? Are you a criminal or something? What? No, well, I guess I kind of am, but that's not important. Hurry up. The water was cold and slimy. I really hope this doesn't stain. I can't afford new clothes this month. Or next month. Probably not the month after, either. I quickly grabbed onto the man's arms. They were slender and fine, although I still couldn't see him very well through the darkness. Where did your shirt go? Anyway, can you push a little? What do you think I've been doing exactly? And I never had a shirt to in the first place, okay? With a final push, with a final pull, I've looked at these words so many times and I still can't read it. He finally came loose. His body tumbled out of the grate, skidding through the shallow water before coming to a halt. My body froze instantly. What took up my sight was something huge, the colour of coral and lavender. It swished through the water trying to gain some traction, but it was just too shallow to work. A tail. Uh, tail? What? What? Shh! They'll hear you! You're a... Suddenly, flashlights lit up in the distance. Ten, twenty, thirty, no, much more than I could count. They lit up the hills around the town, searching around desperately. Along with what sounded... Along with, along with what was the sound of heavy boots stomping. Did you check over there? How would he get over there with a tail like that, stupid? Quick, check the waterways. He couldn't have gone far. Oh shit, oh shit, no, 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 no. This isn't real. This isn't happening. This is the last thing I need right now. I looked down at the merman, lying in the water just ahead of me weakly trying to propel himself through the water, but he couldn't. He looked skinny, and even with that big, strong-looking tail, weak. I swallowed hard. Please. Some part of me wanted to run, to pretend I was never here. Why risk myself for someone I didn't know, after all? But... I think... <sighs> But the look in his face convinced me otherwise. Never had I seen such an expression of pure terror. The last trace of leaving without him went out the window, and I quickly picked him up out of the water, which was no small feat. He weighed probably double my weight in his tail alone. Shit. Where, where are you taking me? I don't know. Away from here, at least. Quickly, I dragged him to the edge of the water, eyes glued on the quickly encroaching flashlights. They bobbed in the darkness, getting closer by the second. Oh god. How much do you weigh? I'll be lucky if my back doesn't hurt any more than it usually does tomorrow. He clung on to me, the cold water from his body seeping further into my clothes. I quickly grabbed my cardigan and over the top of his tail. I quickly draped my cardigan over the top of his tail. It didn't hide much, but it was better than nothing, I suppose. Dashing through the streets away from the lights, we quickly ran towards a dark alley. Footsteps passing us by loudly. The shouting sounded like it was coming from every direction. Surely, surely there was a way to escape, right? If I'm caught with him, what will happen to me? Shit, what have I gotten myself into now? I don't... I don't want to go back. The mermaid muttered under his breath, drawing even closer to me. There's no way to escape, is there? Just leave me here and run. If there's no chance of getting out of here, then I'd rather not drag someone else into my mess. His voice trembled, full of dejection and coated in sadness. No, I'll get you out of here. 
I'm sure I know these streets better than they do. Don't get my hopes up if you can't deliver. I'm helping you, you know. You could be a little more gracious. Thank you. You're what? I'll say it. If you really do get me away from them. All right. Okay then, that's, that's a bit... sassy for someone whose life is in danger. Taking a deep breath to calm my racing heart, I dashed back out into the street, choosing the path with the least street lights. As we got closer and closer to my apartment, the flashlight slowly dimmed out and the sound of stomping boots was far in the distance. Finally, I stood in front of my in front of the entrance to my apartment. Just one thing stood between us. The lobby. I left work at 9 p.m. After everything that happened, it must be at least 10 p.m. Surely that means no one will be around, right? I poked my head in, my arms feeling weak from the man's weight. Shit. Just inside, I could see the back of someone's head. Patchy and grey. My landlord. He lives a few floors down from me. Calling him unfriendly would be an understatement. How am I meant to sneak past him? Who is it? My landlord. Can you take him out? What? No, he's just an old man. It's just an idea. I'm not going to kill my landlord. Then have you got a better idea? Uh, well... Old man could at least listen to it in his room. Well, we'll try to sneak past him. He's busy listening to the radio, so we might be able to do it. And if he turns around, we always have my plan. Ugh. My headache was only getting worse. Leisurely, as if I was just returning home and not harboring a would-be fugitive, I pushed the, do the lobby door open with a creak. Stepping onto the marble onto the fake marble flooring. Oh, nice. I always did think it was tacky, but I'd never thought it was quite this squeaky and loud. With every, with every footstep, I watched the back of the landlord's head with more worry, waiting for him to turn around, shout for help and call the police. At the very least, I don't think he knows how to use a phone. He stayed facing away, listening intently to the radio. We're reporting many people with flashlights searching through the town. Police have yet to confirm who, ex who exactly is being searched for, but we've been led to believe it's either a lost person or escaped prisoner. Oi, who's sneaking around back there? Oh, sir, good, good evening. I've just got back from work, so I should be heading off to bed now. <laughs> My laughter trailed off when he didn't join in. With his head still facing away, I pressed the button for the elevator, praying he wouldn't turn around. You shouldn't stay out so late. There's news of a criminal on the loose. Ah, uh, well, overtime and all, you know? But thanks for the heads up, I'll keep that in mind. The elevator reached the ground floor and with a ding, and I quickly hurried in smooshed in beside the man's large tail. Oi. Y yes Don't forget your house inspection is coming up. Of course. Good night. It turns out spamming the button door the the floor button doesn't make the doors close any faster. What felt like an eternity later, I let out my breath I'd been holding in. I thought that was it for us. What a useless guard. A guard? What? He's not a guard. He owns the building. Is he not a, not on guard in case anyone is escaping? This isn't a prison. It's an apartment complex. I could almost see the question mark appear above his head, but there was no time to address his confusion. The elevator dinged and the doors opened to the fourth floor where my apartment was. 
quickly checking for anyone else, I rushed over to my door, struggling to put the keys in, struggling to pull the keys from my pocket. Finally, we stumbled into my room. Home sweet home, finally. I blinked down at the man in my arms, the weight of what I'd done finally setting into my gut. His skin looked even more pale than before, and his eyelids heavy. Are you... are you okay? Water. 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 Okay, got it. Uh... I glanced around my room. Sink? No good. Bathtub? Probably our only choice. So... so is the bathroom alright? I don't have anything else. Just hurry it up already. Okay, okay. Sorry. With my arms feeling as heavy as lead, I rushed into the bathroom and turned the light on. My arms nearly screamed in relief as I dropped him in the bath. I quickly turned the water on and filled up the tub around him. I always thought my bath was pretty big, nice and deep, perfect for a soak after a long day's work. But with him in it, it looked tiny. His huge tail hung over the edge. The water glistened over his scales. He leant down over the edge, sighing in happiness. Finally, fresh water. A few moments later and the colour had come back to his face somewhat. This is bliss. So, you're a... You're a... I'm a flying pig. What does it look like I am? <laughs> He's so rude. Is that why you have glasses? Some trouble with your eyesight? <laughs> Could just throw you out right now, mister. I, I just lift, risk my life for you and that's how you speak to me? Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. <sighs> Maybe I'll just go turn myself in after all. No, no. Wait a second. I really... I really am thankful, okay? A light colouring of pink covered his cheeks, and he refused to make eye contact. The sight of someone that was so smart-mouthed suddenly becoming timid made me look away, blushing in return. Oh, it's no big deal, I guess. Is uh, the water okay? It's fine. Mm. Wait a second. This is too normal. I quickly rush out the door, slamming it behind me with a loud bang that resounded through my apartment. Okay, okay. That didn't really happen. I'm just seeing things. I'm tired from work. I'm sure if I just... With a shaky hand, I push open my bathroom door again. The merman still laid in my bath. When he saw me, he smiled sweetly and waved. Still here. I think I'm real, too. I slammed the, I slammed the door once again. The bang echoing through my room. Mm. Shit. Okay. I wasn't imagining it. There is, indeed, a merman in my bathtub. Can you stop slamming the door? It's noisy. Oh, sorry. Why am I apologizing? It's my house. I I think I'm going to head to sleep now. Night night. Don't let the bed bugs bite. I don't think you understand that that's an actual worry of mine. With that unsettling thought, I sat down on my couch. The TV remote was on the coffee table, but I wasn't in the mood for watching anything. I'm starving. If I don't eat tonight, I can save a little more for my, of my pay, though. As I weighed up the frozen cons, something fluffy shot out from under the couch before jumping up beside me. General Fluffikins! Oh god, it's been a hell of a day. I'm so happy to see you. Hey, glasses. You talking to yourself? Go to sleep. I can't. You won't stop talking. I scratched around her neck as she purred and climbed onto my lap, cuddling into me. 
The money saved from eating tonight could mean another salmon treat for her. With that thought, I laid back on the couch with a promise to rest my eyes only for a few moments, but I quickly fell asleep. fun thing for this game is this. You can take photos. You can change his expression. Take his glasses off. Give him filters. This one's my favourite. Have to wait until the camera moves back, but... <laughs> and it actually saves a screenshot in your game folder. So that's fun. Another thing you can do is look at... Oopsies. That wasn't what I meant to do at all. Back to this. You can... If you use your mouse click, you can look at the Divine Speaker Patreon uh, itch page for, for download, which is another great, great game that's out for their demo. An extended demo is out now as well. They've also got another game that will be Beyond the Abyss. There's an art book that you can buy. You can also have a look at part of their Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. There's a browser page with <laughs> some fun stuff on it. Got the fishes. There's also a YouTube. Um, two and a half studios. You can click on this video and actually watch the 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 video. Um, <laughs> they surprised me with this one because this song is mine from the credits of the Divine Speak extended demo. And you can change the background of the phone. This one is a late addition and my absolute favorite. This is our wonderful General Fluffikins. She is beautiful. She is based on a rag doll. And she was drawn for us by the Incredible, lovely Red Chan, whose games I have played on this channel before. She's the, the dev for I'm a love interest in my childhood friends, Reverse Harem. She'll also have some more fun games coming out soon. That one for one for Yowie Jam as well. So that's our phone system. That's really fun. Just five more minutes. Five more minutes. My eyes shot open, and I quickly scooped up my phone from the coffee table. 8.15. Shit. I'm going to be late. How did I miss my alarm? Jumping up from my spot on the couch, General Fluffikin leapt up in surprise. I ran for the bathroom and threw over in the door. Morning. Would it kill you to open the door like a normal person? Please, no more slamming. It's really annoying. The bathroom was exactly the same as I'd left it last night, to my chagrin. To my chagrin. I don't even know how to say that word either. I am very bad at English for it being my first and only language. Through my sleepy haze, I remembered sneaking him back into my apartment as if I was on the run. Why did I do that again? That doesn't sound like me at all. I'm going to be late. I really need the shower. Well, it's taken. I can see that, but what do you want me to do? Get out with my legs and wait for you to finish? No, but it's not like I can never shower again. You smell fine. You should shower every day. 
Look, if it's that much of a problem, just get in the bath with me. Uh, not so keen anymore? <laughs> He's such a smart mouth. Fuck it. I'll shower later. Don't have time for this. We can talk more later. I definitely need a shower then, okay? Sure, sure. Work out where else to put me then. The sink? Not funny. Hey, what happened to your face? Didn't you have some kind of markings? They come and go. Right. With not even a second to waste, I rushed back out of the bathroom and dressed before dropping yesterday's moist clothes in a basket to be washed later. Mm, that lovely word. <laughs> that M word that everyone certainly loves. I grimaced at the sight of the, the, the dark wet stains. With that final thought, I poured some food into General Fluffikin's bowl and raced out the door. I burst into the office, quickly found my punch card and clocked in. With fear, my eyes searched for the clock. 8.32 a.m. Well, well, Kova, late. This isn't a good look at all. I'm, I'm sorry, boss. I d overslept. Overslept? Do you think that's a good excuse for being late to your shift? No. This won't be a good look for the higher-ups at all. You're already walking a fine line, you know. I've really been sticking my neck out for you, and this is how you repay me? At this rate, you'll be stuck in this position for the rest of your life. Sticking your neck out my ass. All you do is make everyone work overtime, then take all the credit. Is that what you want? Mm. No, sir. I apologize. It won't happen again. It better not. You better make you better make the time back tonight. I'm guessing he doesn't mean two minutes of overtime. Get back to your desk then. Yes, sir. With gritted teeth, I sat down in front of my computer and powered it on. Did you hear that the management team is furious? Why? What happened now? I heard that... My job mostly involved numbers. Bookkeeping, data entry, general admin duties. A support role. Not exactly what I, be what I dreamed of becoming as a child, but whatever I wished for back then was impossible now. That dream shattered long ago. Swallowing down that feeling, I concentrated on work, blocking out all of the chatter. If throwing myself into work was the only way to forget, then so be it. It's not a healthy person. I worked for an admirable company, Horizons Incorporated. I'm the one being unreasonable here. I'm lucky to have a job in the first place. With those thoughts in my mind, I tried to stop thinking and focus only on work. I mostly succeeded, except for my mind snuck back to the guest in my bathroom. Better I keep quiet about that, I think. I still don't know where he came from. Before I knew it, it was already 11 and time for my break. I quickly set the timer before going on my com quickly set the timer before going on my computer. Five minutes exactly. A second later, and I'll be even m I'll be in even more trouble than I was in this morning. My shoulders cracked as I stretched and stood, walking over to the water cooler. Of course, everyone knows the water cooler is where the gossip is. Usually I try to avoid it, but my throat was dry and scratchy and my stomach empty. I'll eat when I get home. No time now. I'm telling you, they're furious. 
because of an escapee? I thought it was only a rumour that we dabbled in conservation efforts. What happened? Oh, Kova. Didn't you notice the boss was in a bad mood today? I glanced at his door out of the corner of my eye. Seemed about normal to me. Uh, yeah, a little. Well, did you hear that there were people desperately searching through the town in the middle of the night? People are saying that a criminal must have escaped or something. But I think differently. I'm telling you, the rumors about Horizons Incorporated are true. And they're dealing with all kinds of supernatural races behind the scenes. You think so? I mean, that stuff is all so far in the past now. I can barely believe they even existed. I could feel a bead of sweat rolling down my forehead. If it's true, and Nero escaped from here, I'm totally fucked if they find him. You're thinking too hard. If they were involved in conservation, then they'd announce it, right? Well, maybe? What do you expect them to be looking for? An escape the mermaid or something? Uh, oh, look at the time. My break's over. <laughs> An escape mermaid? That, that would be just too crazy. I'm in deep shit now. God, I don't have the energy to deal with this. Rushing back to my desk, I quickly clicked the stop time on my break timer. I had 30 seconds left. Better to be back early than late. I don't understand, though. Obviously, at some point, many different races existed. But they were hunted into the ground. Everybody knew that. It's a fact. Although, one that I don't think about much since it all happened so long ago. Another equally important fact is that traders in the underworld put a heavy price on anything different then organizations must exist to look out for them too. I'm sure of it. Yeah, I've heard rumors about what Horizons Incorporated does in secret, but it's never been more than that. Rumors. If they really are working on conservation, why keep it a secret? It should be a source of pride. And why would someone escape with such a terrified look on their face? My mind wandered back to the merman, whose name I still didn't have, half stuck in a grate, desperately clawing at the muddy water, trying to escape. That's not the face of someone being protected, is it? Then, what's going on here? Hey, Kova? What? Huh. Hey. Sorry, I was lost in my thoughts. I just wanted to ask you... Does she know? If you could look over the figures for tomorrow's meeting? Sure, I can do that. With a smile, she went back to her desk. <sighs> How long will I have to keep this up? <laughs> You're on your first day of work, buddy. You got a long time, hopefully. The rest of the day passed by in a blur. Not exactly fast, but my mind was so occupied that before I knew it, it was already 4.30. I glanced sideways at the door to my boss's office. Over time. Wait a second. M my house inspection is today. Can't let him in with a merman in my bath. I'll get busted instantly. Quickly, I rushed towards the door, noting that the clock is now at 4.42 p.m., and I'd pay back the minutes I was late. My boss poked his head out of his office, shooting daggers at me. Where do you think you're going? What happened to making up the time? I quickly pointed to the clock, which was now at 4.43. Sorry, I have a house inspection, but I promise I'll stay late tomorrow. Not a good look, Kova. Upper management will be disappointed to hear about this. I'll fuck your overtime. I rushed out the door, sprinting out into the streets and legging it all the way home, completely forgetting to clock out at all. How could I forget about the inspection when he reminded me just yesterday? 
Oh, this merman business is messing with my head. The lobby to my apartment complex was empty. My landlord was no one in sight. The elevator waited with open doors and I hurriedly pushed the fourth floor button. The second the elevator doors opened, I saw my landlord in front of my door, with a key halfway in the lock. Sir! Finally home, are you? I knocked for ages with no reply. I just got off work. Um, let me unlock the door for you. He stepped back, giving me a moment to find my keys and unlock the door. My heart rate picked up and I could hear it beating hard in my ears. What am I supposed to do? Uh, so... What's that? Speak up. I'm sorry, just give me a second. I rushed through the now open door, slamming it back closed in his face. <laughs> Oi, what are you trying to pull? You better not have messed the place up. I promise, nothing's messed up. I just, I just, just give me a second. What do I have to hide? Cat bed, litter trays, toys, food bowl, a merman? I moved like the wind, scooping up all General Fofikin's belongings and shoving them out on the small balcony. After, I rushed back into the bathroom to find him still leaning against the edge of the bath, looking bored. You're finally home. I'm really bored, you know? No time to talk. Hey, what what's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> Please, just stay quiet and I'll explain everything after. I sprinted back at, back to the open balcony, collecting General Fluffikins along the way and shoving them out in, onto the balcony. The cat and the merman looked at each other in shock. Both their eyes turned back to me. Please, please just trust me. What kind of a beast is this? You want me to hold it? Shh, shh. I shut the, I shut the balcony door firmly before pulling the curtains back. There, hidden. With the room looking bare of all, bare of both cats and mermen, I finally opened the door. Sorry, sir. You can come in now. You little prick. You're lucky I'd even let you live here. And you dare treat me like this? I'm always lucky for something, aren't I? I... Worthless kid. If I find even a single thing wrong with my apartment, you'll be out on your ass. You got that. I'm not a kid. I'm 25. Yes, please. Feel free to look around now. <laughs> Don't need your permission. I see the landlord as... <laughs> Have you ever watched Up? The, um... The old guy in, in that. Not not the main character, but the, the, bad, the bad guy in that. That's just all that I envision when I think of the landlord. <laughs> My landlord walked around the apartment. Check, checking every cupboard, opening up every compartment. He checked my fridge, my oven, under my couch. He strained his old muscles, pushing furniture around and inspecting for any kinds of damage. What's this box under your bed? Don't touch that. Excuse me? Uh, I apologize, it's, it's the only thing I have left for my grandmother. Mm. Right, well... Don't clutter the place up too much. Oh, he's got a single box under his bed and that's cluttering up the place? Please. He does this every time. Rifles through all my stuff and threatens to throw me out if I complain. I'm used to it now and it's not like I keep anything, anything personal anyway, I guess. My eyes darted back to the closed curtains. Just a little longer. While I wasn't paying attention, my landlord opened up my bathroom door and stepped in. What's the bath full for? Uh... I heard a merman in there? I was actually going to have a quick dip after work. You know how things get this time of year. I'm a little sweaty. Silently, his head popped back out the open doorway and he eyed me up suspiciously. Hmm. <laughs> What's with that chemical smell? You up to no good in here? Chemical smell? Oh, I just 
wash the floors, actually. New product and all. Hmm. Well, at least you're keeping up clean. Yes, sir. I always take care of the place. With a scowl, he ran his eyes over the interior of my apartment once more, searching for anything he could write me up about, but he found nothing. You're safe this time, kid. Don't let me catch you doing anything unseemly. You got that? Of course. And? Oh, shit. Come on, not now. Not when we're this close. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no background. Whoopsie. Yes, get rid of all the cat things. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> He quickly approached the curtains, ha hands resting on the fabric. Oh my god. What now? I... I can hear the lady on the seventh floor tap dancing again. What? I already told her if I caught it doing it again, she'd be out. She's destroying my floors. Quickly, you'd best go tell her now, before they get even more ruined. He pushed his hand away from my curtains and rushed out of my apartment, the door shutting behind him with a soft thud. Oh, God. I'm so not made for this. Can I come in now? Yes, yes. I took a deep breath, trying desperately to calm my quickening heartbeat. I've never been good at lying. I have no clue how I've made it this far. Opening the balcony door, I saw my lovely General Fluffikins on one side of the balcony, hair on end and hissing profusely. On the other end was the mysterious, was the mystery merman, pretending to hiss back. <laughs> uh, I love, I love the stuff between the merman and the cat. It's like territorial. What happened? Your little hell beast tried to take a bite out of me. Hell beast? Her name is General Fluffikins. Uh, are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? It just sounds like a kind of dumb name for a hell beast. She's a cat. A normal cat. She wouldn't even hurt a fly. Ugh. Cats are kind of designed to hurt things. They're hunters. Cats are natural hunters. Cats would absolutely go after a fly. In fact, we tried to teach my cat to go after flies, but she was too lazy and didn't want to. <laughs> oh, I love cats so much. A cat? Some kind of guardian beast? I suppose that makes sense. She would defend you to her last breath and sensed I was a threat. What a truly fierce adversary. She's just a house cat. Whatever. Tap dancing is the best excuse you could come up with? It worked, didn't it? What would you have done if it hadn't, though? At best, I would have been thrown out for keeping a cat. At worst, I would have been arrested for hiding a merman. So why exactly was I thrown out like that? My landlord needed to inspect the property. The guard from downstairs? He's not a guard, he owns the building. He owns the place you live, as well as checks up on you. Is he your captor? Ugh, not exactly. I pay him money and he lets me stay here. But I'm not allowed to have a cat. Or, I guess, a mermaid, I guess. Hmm. What a strange relationship. It's normal. No matter. Where have you been all day? At work. You know what work is, don't you? Some kind of task you complete for a monetary advancement? That'll do. He cocked his head to the side with a frown, biting lightly at his lower lip. What is it? You told them, didn't you? They'll come and find me soon, won't they? They? Them? I didn't tell anyone anything, I promise. 
You're safe here with me. His knitted, his knitted brows relaxed and he looked back at me with a smile. Did you lie to them just like you lied to your guard captor? What the? He was acting kind of cute a second ago, now he's back to being annoying. Come on, let's get you back in the bath already. Scooping him up into my arms, he flicked his tail and nearly made me trip. Hey, you shouldn't just pick me up out of nowhere then. I'm helping you, what's the problem? You can't get there yourself. Mm. His white skin flushed and he crossed his arms over his body. Are you embarrassed? You said I was heavy. You are. Your tail weighs more than I do. I can't help that. Exactly. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Thanks. He muttered a thank you and finally let me take him back to the bathroom. General Fluffikins followed behind me happily. He settled down into the bath, sinking down into the now cool water as if it was warm and inviting. Isn't that cold? Cold or warm, both are good. Huh, interesting. I pulled the bath mat closer, sitting down beside the man that was once again in my bath. He really is real. And I'm going to be in so much trouble if anyone finds him. Thrown out the door with no care, then dumped back into a tiny bath. I'm sorry. You don't really fit, do you? Is it uncomfortable? Yeah. But... He muttered quietly, turning away from me. Your tail really is beautiful, though. Is it? He beat it casually against the edge of the bath, glistening with water. When I looked closer, I could see something else. Small cuts and gashes. Are they from being stuck in that grate? I reached out and ran a finger over his tail. He glared daggers at me before slapping it against the bath. Don't touch it. You're injured. Doesn't matter. It'll heal on its own. I'll go get the first aid kit. I just said, wait there. It's not like I can go anywhere. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> All the lines where he's just like, I am stuck here. What do you want from me? With the contents of the first aid kit strewn over about on the bathroom floor, I picked up a few contenders and read the instructions. <sighs> Guess it would be too much to ask for it to say safe for mermaids on the back, right? I wonder if this can even be used on you. Why wouldn't it be okay? I don't know. I've never given first aid to a mermaid before. Not so different to you, you know. Except for the tail. Mm. <laughs> you look so sad. He pouted a little with a sigh. Sorry I wasn't born human then. <laughs> oh, that line. Wait, I'm sorry, I worded it badly. I just don't want to cause more harm than good. This cream should be okay. Can I put it on? Fine. He winced in pain as I applied the cream to his wounds his whole body tensing up in response to it. Does it sting? A little? I don't know how well this will work, but try not try to not to get it too wet, okay? Try not to get my body, which is submerged in water, wet. Got it. Mm. By the way, you never told me your name. I don't have one. You what? I was never given a name. What about you? Kova. Hmm, not a bad name. Do you really not have one? What use is a name if no one talks to me? Surely someone talked to you in the last... How old are you? 21 and... Nope. Hmm. How could that be possible? 
God. I left you here without food. Or I left you here all day without food, didn't I? Are you hungry? Can you eat human food? Please don't say seafood. Please don't say seafood. I really can't afford seafood. I can eat anything you can. What do you usually eat? I don't know. Some kind of nutrient paste? Hmm. Just get me whatever you eat. Whatever I eat. Right. Hopping up from the bath mat, I strolled back into the kitchen and opened up the fridge. Let's see. What do we have there? One egg. The milk expired a week ago. A wilted lettuce. Okay, no good. Maybe the cupboards. Closing the fridge with a promise to restock next time I get paid. I opened up the cupboard and pulled out two packets of instant noodles. Not exactly nutritious, but it fills the spot. I quickly set them cooking in the for the next couple of minutes before carrying them carefully back into the bathroom. <laughs> Hell beast, be gone. She's just jealous. She's ready to attack me. She's not used to anyone else taking my attention. Don't worry, I'll feed you in a minute. The, hiss the hissing subsided as I stroked down her back, becoming a loud purr. He holds some kind of spell over her. Uh, no, she just likes me. Here, I made noodles. Sorry, my fridge is a little empty at the moment. Noodles? What are noodles? Mmm, mmm. <gasps> these, these. They're cheap, I know, but it's better than nothing. These are amazing. How can something so delicious exist in this world? Uh, oh. Not bad, are they? Now I want noodles. Being human must be amazing if you can eat food like this all the time. This is the food you eat if life isn't amazing, but at least he's enjoying them. I don't think I've ever seen him look so passionate. In the whole day you've known him. What does it say here? There? Uh, Nero's noodles. It's the brand. Nero. It's perfect. Then I'll be Nero from now on. <laughs> he has named himself after noodles. <laughs> oh, the noodle fish boy. That's that's a fine name. Pardon? You want to name yourself after a brand of noodles? Do you have a better idea? No. I guess it's a fine enough name. Nice to meet you, Nero. And it's nice to meet you too, Cova. He smiled widely, slurping down the noodles hungrily. I was starving too. I forgot that I didn't eat all day. Or yesterday, for that matter. The noodles were very welcome. Now I'm two packets down, though. I'll have to readjust my budget. Nero... Can I ask some questions about you? Like what? Like, where you came from? Mm. And why you were being searched for so frantically? Please let this be a coincidence. Let them be looking for someone else. I... I don't want to go back to that awful place. He rested his head in his arms, hiding away from me. Why not? You wouldn't understand. They want to understand. I don't want to talk about it. Just know that I'd rather die than ever be taken back. Okay, then let's forget about the past for a moment. What about the future? The future? What do you want to do after this? I've never dared to dream of the future. Now's your chance. I... I want to go to the ocean, to see what it looks like, to swim beneath the moon, to... to go where no one can ever find me again. The ocean? 
You say that like you've never been. I haven't. I was born in captivity. All I've ever known is the confines of my tank. Oh, and your bath now, I guess. You've never been free? People like me don't get that kind of privilege. Or, well, I don't think they do. I don't know. I've never met anyone else like me. It's late. Why don't you get some rest? If you're tired, you can just say so. Okay, I'm tired, so... Time to do a little research. Standing, I left the bathroom, closing the door behind me before crashing down on the sofa and pulling out my smartphone. Let's see if I can find anything about these rumours. I quickly navigated the web browser and typed in Horizons Corporation's Mermaid. No hits. Hmm. Horizon Corporation Conservation. A few scattered blogs came up, but nothing concrete, and all from a few years ago. How do I pull up maps again? Ugh, I'm no good with phones. A few minutes and hair pulls later, and I managed to open up the maps app. Thinking back to where I found Nero yesterday, I traced the water way back to its starting position. It could only be us. That grate doesn't connect to anywhere else. The rumours must be true then, or nearly true. He's terrified of going back. They must have treated him terribly. They can't be involved in conservation. He was trapped there, like a prisoner. Are there others too? Like Nero? I shut the maps app, thinking about this new information. How about this? Mermaid sighting. Dozens of hits came up, but nothing useful. Blurry pictures at most. Nothing from anyone that's actually encountered one. Wait, what's this? Number one. One mermaid fish dealer. A single bite extends your life. I locked my phone, throwing it onto the table. <sighs> if it's true, he's from work. And I handed over and said I found him. A promotion wouldn't even be the start of it. Imagine how much praise I would get. Guilt instantly overtook me as I recalled his desperate plea for help and the sorrowful look on his face as he told me his dream to visit the sea. I couldn't do that to him. I'd never let myself. Grandmother, what's the best decision? I... I couldn't bear to go back. I never want to hear the sounds of the waves crashing on the floor again. For him, it's a dream, but for me, it's... more like a nightmare. And yet... I can almost hear your voice in my head, scolding me for even weighing up my options when there's only truly one. Hmm? Jumping to my feet, I opened the bathroom door. Were you knocking? It's stuffy with the door closed. Leave it open. Sure. With Nero satisfied, I fed General Fofferkins her dinner and collapsed on the couch. I really should use my bedroom more. As I shut my eyes, my mind wandered back to the box under my bed. A white-haired man laid down in a small bath, his tail whipping the sides in boredom as he stared out into the dark room. With door open, he finally felt like he could breathe easy. I don't like the door being shut. It makes me feel like the walls are closing in on me. He came up with numerous excuses why he wanted it open. It was stuffy, he felt claustrophobic. What he wouldn't admit was he was feeling a little lonely. Of course this wasn't a new feeling. It was, wasn't different to any other time in his life. That's probably why he felt so confused. He'd gotten used to it, became numb to the feeling of being alone and ignored. So why do I feel especially alone when he leaves? 
He tapped his tail against the side of the bath in, ignore in annoyance, irritated that he couldn't figure out something so simple. Just outside the bathroom door, Nero could see the couch where Cova had collapsed and fallen asleep, with General Fluffikins at his feet. Guard, the beast guards him even as he sleeps. Why is he cramped up on the couch anyway? I saw he had a bedroom, and I know humans usually sleep on beds. I, I think. With his white hair cascading around him, Nero leant over the edge of the bath with a sigh. If I was born a human, then I'd be able to go wherever I wanted to as well. I could sleep on the couch, or go to work, or... Or not be hunted for simply existing. He closed his eyes. Even being squished in here is heaven. Even if I couldn't get to the ocean, or if I was stuck in this bath forever, I wouldn't mind. With his eyes shut, he drifted off into the o he drifted off into his dreams. His vitals are fine. He'll survive another round of testing. And if he doesn't, then it's not a huge loss. He hasn't provided us with any with that much data anyway. Wait, please. He's getting to that age where he'll stop being of much use to us. We'll have to replace him sooner or later. So don't worry about pushing him. Yes, sir. I'll schedule him for another blood and flesh extraction. Please, please listen to me. Make sure to gag him. The higher-ups weren't pleased when they to be disturbed by his cries last time. Please. My eyes shot open at the sound of my alarm going off at full volume. Lazily, I rolled off the couch and switched it off. 7.30 a.m. That's more like it. With a yawn, I looked towards the bathroom. Just inside, I could see Nero fast asleep, still leaning over the edge of the bath. I really need a shower. But I don't want to disturb him yet. Looks like it'll be an unhealthy of deodorant. An, un an unhealthy dose of deodorant today, yet again. People will start to notice at this rate. I walked into the kitchen, stretching out my tired shoulders. I really need to stop hunching over my computer. General Fluffikins walked between my feet, dashing for the food bowl. She purred loudly as I poured in her breakfast and I leaned down to scratch between her ears. Good girl. I looked down at yesterday's clothes. I fell asleep without getting changed again. Tiptoeing into my bedroom, I changed into a new set of nearly identical clothes. Fashionable? Probably not, but they were on sale. Dropping my dirty clothes into a hamper, I walked back into the lounge while pulling up my trousers. Huh. So that's what a human's lower half looks like unclothed. The sound of Nero's voice suddenly ringing through the house made me jump away in fright, rushing to cover myself up. Hey! What? Don't look! It's not my fault you're walking around undressed. A moment later, I was finally fully covered up. Where are you going? I have work. Didn't you have work yesterday? I have work nearly every day. What? Where's the time to enjoy life if you're always working? That's lame. If I don't work, I won't be able to invite, survive, let, al let alone enjoy life. Who decided that? What? Who decided that you have to spend your life doing something you don't want to do just to survive? That doesn't seem fair. You're barely better than a prisoner yourself. Mm. I've never really thought of it like that. It's just how it works. You work, you sleep, you work again. It'll probably be the same for the rest of my life. Haven't you ever dreamed of something... more? I... not really. Hmm. Anyway, I want to talk. Can you skip work? If I want to get fired, we can talk once I finish, okay? I can't be late again. It's boring sitting, sitting around all day waiting for you. Want me to bring you over some books to read? Mm. No. Uh, I... I can't... I can't understand you when you're muttering. 
I can't actually read. You can't? Wait, of course he can't. He's been in captivity his whole life, ignored. When could he get the chance to learn to read? Sorry, I didn't think hard enough. How about I turn the TV on and turn it towards the bath? But I want to be able to talk to you, too. Mm. Oh, I have an idea. Wait there for a second. Not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, I love those moments. I ran back into my bedroom, quickly opening up my bedside drawer. In it was an old phone, a model I had a few years back. Luckily, it still worked and had some charge. There, you can, mes you can message me using it. I showed him the phone, clicking on the message icon. I just told you I can't re There's a voice to text option. Here, if you click this button, it will type out anything you say and then send it to me. When I type, when I text you back, you can click here to read it out loud too. Anything could happen while I'm at work, so this is definitely a safe thing to do. So this is a phone. I saw the scientists using them before. I can really have this? Hope it's waterproof. It's all yours. He looked at it with a face full of wonder. But there was something else too. Doubt. No one's ever given me anything before. I promise it's yours. I won't take it from you. My own phone. Oh shit, I gotta run. I'll barely make it in time. Wait, I'm hungry. Running out of the bathroom, I switched on the TV to a random channel and left the house. Feed him! He is hungry, boy. He has only had noodles. You really left in a rush. Is it that much of a big deal if he's late? The merman stretched out his tail, slapping it lightly against the bathroom tiles. What the? There's tiny people in there. A news channel played on the TV with two reporters sitting side by side, chatting about the goings on in the world. Nero looked at them in fear, wondering just how they got in the TV. Hey, people in the TV, are you prisoners? Do you need help? They kept chatting, oblivious to Nero's yelling. They're trapped just like I was. They must think that escape's impossible. If I could just get a little closer, I could get them out. I can't do anything. Stuck in this bath. I'm useless. If I was human, if I was born normal, like everyone else, I could help them. But I wasn't. Everyone thinks I'm some kind of freak. No matter where I go, no matter what I do, they'll always find me. Look at me with their huge, curious eyes. Take me away. Why me? Why only me? Everyone wants to hurt me. Except for Kova. He treats me like I'm normal. Meow. General Fluffikin sauntered into the bathroom, meowing loudly. She sat down and waved her tail about, looking at Nero intently. Go away. She meowed again, this time louder. What do you want? To tease me? To show me that even you, a beast from hell, can do whatever you want? Shoo! Meow! Ugh. Just next to the TV, Nero could see a packet of something that could only be food. It sat there, so close yet so far away, as if teasing him. Hell beast, make yourself useful. Go bring that to me. Meow! I said go, fetch! So this is the path you've chosen. You'll regret this. With a swish of her tail, she turned and left the bathroom, going back to eating her own food. <laughs> oh, cats are so mean. Filled with annoyance, he cupped a handful of water in his hands and threw it at her. She jumped up in shock, hissing. That's what you get. And next in the news, a statement from Horizons Incorporated, the company that brings you tomorrow, today. The office was a buzz with whispered chatter when I got when I got to work, two minutes before my shift was due to start. 
Did you see the press release that... that came about about the missing person? They put one out? I tried my best to push the voices a away and get back to work. My stomach rumbled, desperately hungry, but there was no time to eat. Hmm? Who would be messaging me? Oh, Nero, that's right. I pulled out my phone under my desk, careful no one could see, since phones were meant to be switched off during work hours. And now we get to the phone. Ooh, look at our, look at our pretty girl. Oh, she's so pretty. I love her so much. She's based on one of the one of our developers' cats. They have two ragdolls, and I love them very much. I'm obsessed with ragdolls. They're my absolute favorite cat breed. And I get to look at her all the time whenever they text. Test, test. This is a test. The test is working. This auto plays. So you don't need to do anything here. Do you need something? Test, test. Be gone, cat. I'm testing my phone. Nero, it's working. She called a cat too, not Hellbeast. What? The phone just spoke my name. It's me, Kova. Kova? How did you get inside the phone? <sighs> he's so innocent. I love, I love his outlook on the world. It's like, he's just, he knows things, but just kind of not what things are, how they work. Watching him learn throughout the throughout the game is going to be really fun. Ah, I see you're at work, not on the phone. That's right. Is everything okay? Um, mostly. Oh God, there was a slight accident. Don't worry. Now I'm worried. Going now. Bye. <laughs> hey, Nero. Nero. Get back here. <laughs> He's a bit of a gremlin. <laughs> Ugh. Now I'm going to worry about it all day. This is as bad as when people say, can we talk? Instead of just saying what they want to say. Everyone, gather around for a minute. Quickly now, we don't have time to waste. My boss walked out of, from his office clapping his hands obnoxiously to get everyone's attention. We all looked at each other in confusion. Usually, he wouldn't call everyone together like this. He saw it as a waste of valuable work time. Ahem. <clears throat> Some of you may have seen the statement that ran on TV this morning, as well as heard the news a few nights ago about a missing person. Horizons Incorporated has come out with an official statement. An important asset to our company has gone missing, and they will do anything in their power to get it back. An important asset. My brows furrowed, and instantly I knew he was talking about Nero. How much does he know? Is he just acting on what the higher-ups are saying, or does he realise it's a mermaid that's gone missing? And a reminder that... Anyone found stealing company property will be taken straight to the authorities. However, anyone that has any leads will be rewarded immensely. I'll be sure to put in a good word to management. This is a chance for a big promotion. And let's be honest, most of you wouldn't stand a chance otherwise. He's so rude. What an asshole. So, everyone is to be on the lookout. Sir, may I ask a question? If you must. Exactly what are we on the lookout for? You'll know it when you see it. That's not very helpful. A computer, important documents. Very nosy, aren't you? I'm just saying, sir, that it's hard to keep an eye out for something that we don't know what it is. Fine. 
This will only be between the team. Got it? All I've heard is that the conservation rumor that's been going around is possibly true. Take from that what you will. Ugh. That confirms it then. He knows. He's off to Nero. Oh, it makes me feel sick. Suddenly, I felt as if every single person's eyes were on me. They know, don't they? They know I'm keeping him hidden after all. Then, time finally seemed to resume and everyone had already gone back to their desks. Stop zoning out and get back to work. Y yes sir. I sat down at my desk, my vision spinning. Everything felt so distant, so far away. I was brought back to reality by a hand grasping my shoulder. Ugh. Ugh. Sorry, Kova. I didn't mean to scare you. Uh, No, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I was just zoning out a little. I can tell. Something on your mind? Uh, just some harm troubles. I shouldn't bring it to work. We all can't help it sometimes. Especially when... Working in such a stressful job. I looked at her, short and slim with neatly cropped hair. She worked at the desk next to mine, but we didn't speak much. I can't say I speak with much with anyone here, honestly. I'd be lucky if they even knew my name. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that I won the work charity raffle. Oh, uh, oh, um, congratulations. Thank you, but the truth is I actually just wanted to make a donation and I ended up with a lot of things I don't really need. Would you be interested in anything? You're asking me? I don't really talk to anyone else here. Uh, I don't... Wait. What were the prizes again? My thoughts wandered back to the raffle. I'd wanted to join, but it was a tough week financially. I think every week for you is a tough week financially. What have we done to you? I'm so sorry. Uh, actually, I'd love to. Great! Here, you can take all this! With a smile on her face, she unloaded a collection of random items onto my desk. One thing in particular stood out. A kid's blow-up pool. Oh, this is perfect. I can set it up in my lounge. He'll love it. Just as I was thinking of texting him, my phone went off once again. Um, so it's gotten worse. What has? That problem I mentioned earlier? Uh. Will you tell me now? You'll see for yourself soon enough. Right. I have exciting news. What is it? Nope, not telling. <laughs> Petty level. <laughs> You won't tell me either. Fine. We can both tell each other when you're back from work. Sounds good. Hey, what does this button do? What? Some kind of face. Uh. See you soon, Kova. Mm. I felt my face flare up as I slid my phone back into my pocket. He should send emojis like that so it ran so easily. I should make sure he can't text anyone else. Just like that, it's already 4.30. By the looks of it, my boss had already gone home for the night. Typical. Well, I guess it also has benefits. I can sneak out without being noticed. 
I bundled up the items from my workmate, giving her a smile as I left. Outside, the sun was already beginning to set. This time of year, it got dark so early. Under one arm, I had a blow-up pool. Under the other, a collection of miscellaneous items. Including a rubber, a yellow rubber ducky. Heh <laughs> I must look stupid right now. I don't really have the energy to deal with all this. But I'm also a little excited to show this to him. Still, I must have done something pretty awful in my past life to get stuck with all this. Me being excited to show a merman a kiddie pool. Who would have predicted this? With a sigh, I walk down the paved path by the water, enjoying the last bit of sunlight on my face. I wonder what I should do. He can't stay in my house forever, can he? He's not made for living like that. But I can't turn him in either. I promised him he was safe with me, even if the sound of a promotion is appealing. They called him a thing, an object, an asset. It makes my blood boil. They don't deserve him. I raised my hand to my forehead, the cool touch easing my oncoming headache. It never really goes away for long, does it? As I stepped in the door, something splashed under my foot. When I looked down, I noticed a puddle. Well, well, and another, and a couple more. Is this just all from the, the cat and the merman fighting? Territory dispute. The entire floor was covered in water, splashed everywhere haphazardly. I dropped off my armful of items on the couch. What the? I followed the trail back to, who would have guessed, the bathroom. Stay away. Uh, what's going on now? Your hell beast attacked me. Not only that, she refuses to fetch. Cats don't really fetch. I looked closer, noting the scratches all over Nero. General Fluffikins hissed from the corner, hair standing up straight. Quickly, I pulled a towel from the shelf and wrapped her half soggy body up, petting her dry. My landlord is going to kill me if any mold starts growing. Why are you trying to make her fetch anyway? I was hungry. Oh. God, Nero, I'm so sorry. I totally forgot you weren't able to get food for yourself. Setting General Fluffikins down, freshly dried and fluffy, I rushed back to the kitchen and pulled out another packet of instant noodles. Two minutes later, I walked back into the bathroom, handing them over carefully. I'm really sorry, okay? It's okay. Mm, these are delicious. Humans really do eat like kings, don't they? Well, aren't you going to have any? Oh, uh, what can I say? I don't want to tell him that I don't have enough food for the both of us, and... I don't get paid for a couple more days. Well, you see, I ate at work. I'm not really hungry. I prayed my stomach wouldn't grumble right then and there. I'll be fine for a few days. No, you won't. You can't just not eat for several days. That would be terrible. Once I get paid, I'll adjust the budget for two. Nero slurped up his noodles, a satisfied look on his face. So. What's the surprise you messaged about? Wait a second. I'll go get it. Hiding it behind me, I pulled out the blow-up pool and showed it to Nero. It's a pool. Someone at work gave it to me. I thought you might be getting a little lonely stuck in the bathroom by yourself. I mean, I also really need to shower, so it's kind of two birds with one stone. Uh, you really got this for me? Yeah. Wait, I'll blow it up. It took a little while to blow up, my head going light at times, probably because I hadn't eaten properly, but I didn't let that stop me. 
Ta-da! It's cute, right? You really don't look like the kind of person that would like cute things. Why not? There's nothing wrong with cute things. You're just going to put it there? Won't people see? I won't have another house inspection until next month, and I don't really have any friends to visit me anyway. Hmm. Oh, don't look at me like that. I don't have time for anyone else anyway. A single bucket at a time, I started to fill the pool with water. Wow, it's bigger than I originally thought. This should be much more comfortable. Satisfied, I walk back into the bathroom. You're really going to love this. But before I move you in there, let me take another look at your injuries. Kneeling down beside the bath, I ran my fingers down his tail again, noting that the gashes looked to be healing quickly. The injuries from the hell beast were nothing more than tiny scratches, but didn't look like they needed any, any tension. But there was still that same smell, like some kind of chemical. Wait, is it coming from Nero? Can you smell that strange chemical scent? Oh, it's... My tank was filled with chemicals to keep me docile. Sorry, I'll try to scrub it away. Uh, how awful. Without realizing it, I reached out to touch Nero's long white hair. It was soft and silky under my fingers. Nero stared back at me without moving. I didn't try he didn't try to swap my hand away or plack his tail against the side of the bath. Can I wash it for you? Sure. Scooping up a handful of shampoo, I massaged it into his hair, trailing my fingers down the length. He leaned back into me with a sigh. That feels nice. I bet. I haven't had someone wash my hair since... since... well, a long time ago. His hair cascaded out from his head in the water surrounding him. It was an almost beautiful sight. Never thought I'd be washing a guy's hair in my bathtub, but here we are, I suppose. I repeated the actions, adding the conditioner before washing it out. When my hands left his head, I saw him pout. How about we get you in the pool? For once he made no complaints as I picked him up. Even being braced for his weight, I couldn't believe how he heavy his tail made him. I'm too heavy, aren't I? No, no, you're fine. <laughs> Look at the pool! <laughs> it's got little fishies on it. Gently leaning down, I placed him in the pool. Instantly, he stretched out his tail. Ugh, it's perfect. And now you won't be all alone. Pretty good, huh? The TV was still on from earlier, but I picked up the remote and switched it to another channel. Some kind of trashy murder mystery show played on TV. With Nero occupied, I collapsed onto the couch beside him, picking up my phone to browse for a few minutes. Let's see, what else could I search? Horizons Incorporated Scandal. To my surprise, a blog from five years ago popped up. When I clicked into it, scrolling down through the text, I worked at Horizon Incorporated until last year, it started. In my 10 years there, they worked everyone to the bone, and overtime wasn't optional if you didn't want to be run out of town. Sounds about normal. Even though I did everything right, they still fired me. Even now, I fear for my life. They keep sending people after me. What? Because I found out their secret. I found out their... Experiments. It's the truth. Creatures lost to time that we thought long extinct, they buy them from the black market, experiment on them, then sell their rare parts back for triple the price. I could feel my stomach in my throat. The blog went on to talk about what he'd seen. Chambers that honestly could be called torture rooms. The poor conditions that everyone was being kept in. Under that was flooded with comments calling him a delusional liar. It sounded insane, but 
My eyes glance towards Nero. Living proof. Why do they keep people trapped in these tiny screens? For entertainment? What? No, they're not in the TV. It's just a recording. Hmm. Nero turned away from the TV, his eyes glued to mine. I want to talk to you. What about? Thank you for rescuing me. I don't think I could ever repay you. If you hadn't been there, I... They... I would have preferred death to being found. So thank you. You probably already know this, but... I escaped from a facility not far from here. I thought as much. I don't even know where to begin explaining. I told you I was born in captivity, right? I suppose it was more like I was bred specifically to be experimented on. My... My mother... I never knew her. But I'm sure she was exactly the same. Forced to have me so they could have a new sample. Nero... They must have disposed of her not long after. We're only useful for a certain amount of time, apparently. And then what? Then we're worth more cut up into parts. You know, they say eating a bit of mermaid makes you live long forever. Is that true? I have no clue, but it didn't matter to them. I'd never known anything but the hazy people outside of my tank and the constant beeping. I want to see the ocean. I flinched, but continue listening to him. Maybe... Maybe it's not possible. Maybe I'll be hunted for the rest of my life, no matter where I go. The ocean, huh? You're lucky we live in a seaside town. Please, allow me to stay for a while, just until I heal. I can work out a plan. I, I won't ask you for anything more than that. You're already risking a lot for me, aren't you? His face was stern and serious. His voice with not even a hint of snark. You can stay here as long as you need. I mean it. Really? Yeah, really. I can tell you're in trouble and I won't let anyone lay a finger on you while you're under my roof. Nero sighed, staring out at the window. At some point in time it had become dark and Stars had begun to light, the, light up the night sky. Have you ever been? To the ocean? Hmm. Yeah. What's it like? It's... It's beautiful. You'd love it. Why do you sound so hesitant? I... I was brought up by the sea by my grandmother. I think I spent more time in the water than I did on land. Really? Mm -mm. But now it's just a bad memory. I don't want to go back. Oh. Don't let that discourage you. It's where you belong. Well, anyway, work's really been taking everything out of me. I'm exhausted. What do you do? They expect our lives to be solely dedicated to our jobs. Maybe if it was a job I actually enjoyed, it wouldn't be so bad. Ugh, so tired. Stuck in this rut forever. Sorry, I'm just complaining now. That's not really an answer. I should just tell him. This will confirm things for real. I work in administration at Horizons Incorporated. <sighs> Before my eyes, Nero visibly stiffened and backed away. His eyes going wide. You... 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 It's true, then. Nero's the property that's gone missing. You're one of them. You've been tricking me. Wait. You've just been trying to get my hopes up. But you're really going to hand me over, aren't you? Wait, wait, wait. You're misunderstanding. I work an office job there. I had no clue what was actually going on. I promise... I'm on your side. I won't let them hurt you. 
You won't let them touch you. Okay. You're the talk of the town, though. I had a suspicion that's where you came from. Why didn't you tell me before? You weren't ready to talk about it yet. I didn't want to rush you. And I was trying to do some research myself. I'm so, so sorry for what you've been through. If only I'd known. If only I'd known. Then what? I would have broken in and freed him? Risked my life for someone I didn't know? No, I... I would have put my head down and kept working. Pretended I didn't know. I'm really just as bad as them. Sorry, I jumped to a conclusion. I trust you. Thank you. My eyelids felt heavy and I closed them softly. The sound of the TV sounded felt so distant as I dozed off into a dreamless sleep. Nero's eyes rested on Kova's sleeping face. Watched as the black-haired man sn softly snored. He'd passed out mid-sentence, still got his phone in his hand, stood his glasses on. I love the bits of red in his hair. He's so pretty. He really must be tired. Maybe being human isn't so good after all. With these thoughts in his mind, he reached out absent-mindedly, playing with a strand of Kova's hair. Soft. I want to wish his too. Why? Why do I find you so easy to talk to? To be around? All this talk of experimentations, of hiding, of bad memories. Yet, why do I feel so comfortable and safe with you? Perhaps if I was human. We would have been friends. Maybe we would have gone to school together. Or grown up as next door neighbours. Maybe we'd work together, or buy a house together. All things I'll never get to experience. Noticing Kova's glasses, Nero gently took them off and set them down on the table next to him. I wonder, why can't all humans be as kind as you? He shut his eyes, terrified of the dreams to come. No. No, please. Mm -mm. No more. I can't. Somewhere in the darkness, I could hear someone thrashing around, water going everywhere. Nero? I opened my eyes, the TV lighting up Nero's figure, which seems smaller than ever. Nero. <laughs> it hurts. What hurts? Nero, are you okay? His sobs were muffled but audio audible. I jumped up from my place on the couch, rushing to his side. His eyes were shut, his face screwed up in what looked like in what looked like immense pain. He's asleep. He must be having a nightmare. Nero, wake up, it's just a dream. I shook his shoulders lightly at first, but when he didn't react, put more strength into it. Still his eyelids wouldn't budge. I'm going to die. Please, please no more. Kicking off the shoe that I'd forgotten to take off, I stepped into the pool. The water was icy cold and instantly my legs went numb. But it didn't stop me. I sat down beside him, dragging his torso over so his head rested in my lap. With one hand still on his shoulder, I used the other to gently stroke his hair. Wait a second, where did my glasses go? My eyes scanned the area until I finally saw them resting on the coffee table. I don't remember taking them off. My eyes wandered back to Nero's figure. In the moonlight, I couldn't help but feel he had a bewitching beauty. His tail the colour the most beautiful sunset. His hair long and silky. How could anyone see him other than like this? Like an object with a price. Mildly, his markings began to glow in the darkness and I looked on, captivated. Beautiful. 
is really so beautiful. My eyelids felt heavier and heavier. I slumped forward, my forehead pressing to his, and my eyes closed. Like this, I fell back into my slumber, comforted by his body below mine. And we are done! Oh. We had some really amazing people work on this. Our artists, Leaf and Red, Catharis did our, our GUI. This will have voice acting a little later. There was some test, there was some technical issues which stopped us from, from releasing it with the release, but it is still coming. We've got some amazing people who are actually working on this. Most of it's done. So it won't take too long. So keep an eye out for that. Go and download us, give us ratings and tell people that it's cool. So hopefully we can eventually make a full version of this. I'd love to make a full game of this and hopefully you want it too. This is the first time I've made an actual game. We've been working on it for the past two months on and off. It's my first real entry into audio engineering with voices which is something that I want to become I want to eventually become an audio engineer for both for music and for for games I've been learning programming I've been wanting to make games for like 10 years or so was told you know it's not really an industry that women are in so this is a huge milestone because it proves that yes I can, I can do this. It's an industry that yes, women are in and being able to make this has been huge and so much fun and I hope to see everyone supporting it and a huge thank you to all the people who have supported us in our, in, in our journey to create it. Uh, between the three of us, two of us were learning and one was guiding us and incredibly grateful for that guidance. And my other programmer, friend and wonderful person, Emma, has an amazing work as well. And she was so quick and she understood it so well. And I'm just very proud to be in the group of people that I am and so grateful. And I love all my friends a lot. And my wonderful, amazing and supportive partner. I love you a lot. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed listening and my word vomit now. And download the game, rate us, play other people's ya yaoi jams. There's a lot of amazing things coming out and I'm excited to play more and Excited to make more and thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!